Now we're going to move on from the script to a little bit more preparation and detail. And that's called the shot list. The shot list is an extension of the script. The script gives you the dialogue, it gives you some of the settings, it gives you some of the information about the props that are being used, the people that are there. It's basically the story, right? But the shot list is going to list every shot that you need. That is, when the camera is taking that picture, shooting that little video from beginning to end for one shot. Now it's important when you're making your video to begin to think this way. You think in shots. So this is one shot. Then I move over here and we shoot this shot. Then we move to a new location we shoot that shot. So a shot is when you begin from pushing record to your end, that's a shot. Now of course you can repeat a shot over and over again if you want to get it just right or if it has an outtake, something's no good. But the point is, you need to think beforehand what are all the shots that are going to create the action that is specified in your script. So you already have your script, now you're going to break it out into shots. The best way to look at this is to look at an example. So let's go ahead and take a look at an example from one of my students here. We have a couple groups, so let's look at our first group here and what we have is what I asked them to create was the creative brief that is before they went out and actually started the project they had a brief a kind of summary of all the information that leads up to they're actually going out to the shoot so in this creative brief at the beginning this group number one they had a creative brief and they listed some of the things we've talked about in previous lessons. For example, they talk about the objective. So what is the objective? That's kind of the pitch. And here, to teach freshmen who live in the girls' dormitory. So the new students in the girls' dormitory, the process of using the refrigerators. And those refrigerators are to keep their food in. So that's very specific. Here is the target audience target audience is going to be freshmen who live in the girls dormitory so the female um, freshmen who are coming in for the first year so great there you go very clear I like that that's a really great example of getting your target audience clear and having your pitch very clear so if these uh, students came to me or they came to an administration say look we want to make a video to help freshmen who live in the female dormitories uh, and know where to get their food inside the refrigerator, how to get it in and out of the refrigerator, uh, that's what do we do? And, the, and, and I would say, or the administrator would say, well, uh, what do you mean? And they can just say there's one line here. This video will teach freshmen how to get their food out of their refrigerator in the dormitory. Very straightforward. I really like that. So I think they've done a good job here. They talk about the positioning and it's really a little bit of the uh, genre that's going into here. What's, what's it made up of? And so in this video they want to have curiosity. They want to have that colorful college life feeling. They want to have some kind of feeling of happiness and love for their dormitory, I think. They want to have a lot of energy and they want to be healthy, get slimmer, so that's why they're talking about food. What they're really saying is how to have healthy food and how to get food from parents in order to reduce their chance of eating out. I think that's a healthy thing. They don't want to eat out too much. So um, there you go. These are non-native English speakers. The English is pretty good. They can do a good job here. But it's a little bit, a little bit um, confused, but I think what I like is They've really thought about their positioning, and um, they've made it pretty clear. I mean, they've done a good job. Then they have a tone that they're giving the video, and an overall strategy. So, how do you like this? They, they even created a slogan. They even created a message. The slogan is, Handling Your Perfect College Life 101-1. 
So this is one of the really cool parts about preparing for the video. You can see they sat down as a group and they thought about it, they got excited about it, and they began creating about it. And they begin to write that down and create that structure. And then they even have a slogan, they have a motto, you know, they have a message. And that's really cool. You can see when producers and directors make a big movie, they often have a t-shirt or a hat and has the movie logo. Everybody gets into all the parts of that. I feel that's what they've done here. So they're brainstorming and they're coming up with some great ideas. Those ideas may or may not be used in the final video, but hey, they're very useful to get us all together. Then they have a story structure, and we've talked about structure before, right? So beginning, middle, and end. So they're very clear. This is what's going to happen at the beginning, and this is about the expectations of college life and how do you do it? Having a good diet. So they've got some very key points. Here's the middle of the video. There's going to be steps to using the refrigerator. They need to wait until the center opens. That's a good point. They need to register. I guess this is the process you need to go through. And you need to show your student ID. So this is really turning out to be a pretty good idea, isn't it? We've got a beginning and somebody's going to be doing something in the middle and then in the end they're going to have testimonials, so people saying how great this turned out to be. And here I even like in their uh, treatment here they have the hero. So the person who they're going to make the hero is at the beginning and the end and shows some kind of benefit, uh, have some kind of reward. Okay, what we have here is a very nicely done shot list. So, in this case our group has divided the shot list up into this uh, beginning, middle, and end. And then what they've done is they've basically come up with their locations, location one, two, and three, and they're breaking out their shots in detail. Now of course it's written in Chinese here, but they've done a really good job to clarify to themselves what they're going to do, how they're going to plan all of that. It's a really great. And then we've got a storyboard. We're going to talk about storyboard a little bit later. So, very good job there. I think I've uh, really think they've done a good, uh, a very clear preparation. Let's look at another group here. So there's a second group. And their brief is all in Chinese, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and go through it. They, they've got some planning here. So in their brief, they have their objective. And their objective is to teach new students about a building on campus. And they want them to avoid this building. There's something negative about this building they want them to avoid. And the target audience here, they say, are all new freshman students. Now, what we have here at the very beginning, we can see that although it's really great to have a treatment, and I really appreciate that, it's got a couple problems to start with. For one, uh, this idea of it's a building you need to avoid, it's not very clear. I mean, I'm reading the Chinese, in Chinese is not very clear. So I think they're not really clear on what they're trying to do. Now, they may think they're clear, but if you cannot write it down in a pitch, you know, and the pitch is not really easy to understand, then you really have a little bit of a problem. Target audience, everybody it says, all freshmen. Well, the assignment was to create a video to train freshmen or some group of freshmen or some special aspect of freshman life for those new students coming in. It didn't have to be for everyone. And we saw the other group was very specific, female dormitory first year students. In this case, it's going to be all freshmen. Well, right away, that should be a signal that's a little bit dangerous. When your target audience is everyone, I mean, I'm, they're not everyone, they're freshmen, but it's all freshmen, really? All freshmen are going to have the same interest in this? That's a little bit of a problem. So right away, I think the, the target audience is a, is a is a bit of an issue. 
They say here that the positioning and the tone, they're basically going to, uh, the positioning is that it's going to be an instructional video, so this is the genre. So that's very good. They're making up their genre clearly. And the tone of, or the subgenre that they're kind of putting in there is a kind of dark or kind of horror, scary kind of uh, genre. The overall strategy they lay out here is that they want to use a kind of uh, scary strategy to uh, make fun of the horror genre, but then in the end, um, something kind of more humorous happens and everybody learns something. Okay, I, I kind of get that, but it is a bit, it is a bit on the vague side. They did go ahead and make a shot list, which is great. So here we have a shot list and you can see they have broken it into scenes. So they have scene one, scene two, and shot one, scene one, shot one, scene one, shot two. And these are the locations they're shooting at. And this is some of the content that is borrowed from the script that's put in here so we know what's happening. We also have some camera angles and some effects. So here we have a zoom in. So that's very nice telling us exactly how that's going to flow. So this is a great example of a shot list and it's broken down in, in real nice detail. I would say that if everybody could make a shot list like this, it would really help you a lot in executing. Pretty impressive actually. And then they have a shooting list, which is basically a location. So they went ahead and they scouted out their location. And for each location, they go ahead and list which shots are going to be at that location, which is great. And then they've created a checklist and they're going to have a storyboard. We'll look at the storyboard a bit later. So it seems a bit tedious, but you know what? Once you get going with your team members, this is kind of a fun part. You're kind of planning it out. You've got the script. Once you get past the script, it gets the ball rolling like a snowball. It gets bigger and bigger, easier and easier. And I think we can see here that these students kind of got involved in it and then they broke it out into a shot list. Very good job. So that's a shot list. Now let's go to our hardware table. Okay, hey, here we are at the hardware table, and what's the hardware we're going to look at this lesson? Well, I've got something already lined up, and I think you're going to either be excited about this, or you're going to be <laughs> very bored by this, because it seems like Warden just won't give up on this. We're going to do a little bit more on the sound. Remember we looked at this device earlier. This was our portable mixer. This allowed us to hook up a microphone into this mixer, and then from this mixer, we could attach the 1 8 mini jack, and then this could go into our camera or into our recording device, right? But what I wanted to show you today is something very specific, and that's this display here. Now this display is the audio level, and I'm sure you've seen levels very often. So let me go ahead and speak into the microphone. Test, test, check, 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 one, two, testing, five, four, three, two, one, zero. So that's the level. I'm sure you've seen that. We've all seen that in, in movies, and maybe you've had this, you, maybe this is on your phone, an app on your phone can do levels for the audio. What I want to show you is how this is useful for when you're recording. So in this case, what we have is we have this dial which is going to dial up the volume or the sensitivity, actually it's the volume of this input. So if I turn it all the way down and now I speak into the microphone, test, 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 there's nothing because I'm turned all the way to zero. Now I begin to turn up, test, five, four, three, two, one, zero, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero, ten, nine, eight, and you see I've, I've dialed all the way up now, and you can see that our level's gone up to maximum. You can also notice that this red light over here is lighting. So this is called a peaking light. And sometimes this peaking light will be 
linked up with this level on some machines and some software and sometimes it's separate. Sometimes you have this level goes up and then it turns yellow and then if it gets higher it turns red. You can see in our peaking here it turns yellow and then it also turns red. Red is all the way at the top and can I get it to be yellow? Testing, testing, checking, checking, one, two, checking, checking, check, test, test, test. Oh, maybe this light doesn't turn yellow, it just goes red, it's a peaking light. So that peaking light is showing me we've gone over the limit. Now what does that mean by the limit? Well the limit is on this bar here there's numbers and those numbers range from negative numbers like negative 16, negative 15, negative 12, negative 9, negative 6, negative 3, 0, and then after 0 they go positive. That's the way these level gauges work. It's negative, 0, and then positive. So how do you use that? Well one thing is you want to avoid peaking. So this red light peaking is definitely a problem. That means you've gone too high. When you see that line going all the way up to the top, that's also peaking. That's the same thing. That's too high. That's the same as if I take my time mic and right now I That's peaking. That's peaking. What's the bad thing about peaking? Well, the really bad thing is, once your audio goes up too high and that peaking happens, when you put that into your editing program, you'll see the line go up over the top and the sound is missing. That means that it's all just become empty. The sound has filled up all of the space and you've cut it off. So you're not going to be able to hear anything. And in your editing software, even if you turn down the volume and try to adjust it, you can't because it's already been lost. When that peaking happened, when that red light happened, that sound was off the limit, off the charts. So you're not going to get it back. So that's the worst thing that could happen. You go, you shoot your video, you record your audio, maybe you were careful. You could hear it in your headphones, okay, it sounded okay. But then when you got back, it's missing, it's cut off. Why? Because it, maybe your earphones could hear it okay, could, sh could describe it okay, but your peaking was happening and you didn't pay attention. So what should we pay attention to? Well, the peaking light you want to avoid. Also, you want to get that level to be down near the zero mark. So I want to go down, down, down to zero, and I want to not cross zero. Now, when I'm speaking like this, it's getting to zero, but then sometimes I speak louder, it's over. So you want to adjust so that even when the person's speaking loud, even when the talent's speaking loud, the maximum it goes to is zero. The maximum it goes to, I'm testing it. The maximum, the maximum, okay, there we go. Now sometimes you may have a special case where someone comes closer and further away and you may have to adjust that dial. That's when it's really good if you have two or three people working on your project. One person can be shooting the camera and one person can be doing the audio. And they can be adjusting because the talents move further away or closer or there's, you need to change the microphone position and you need to adjust that. But if it's just one, one person in one position, then you need to do this, which is get that highest, the highest point, his highest voice reaches zero. Now you may say, well, now it's getting so low when the person is not speaking loud, what about that? Well, usually low is not such a problem as too high. Too high is gone. Low just becomes very, very soft. When you put that into your editing program, you can increase the volume. You can bring it up. You can maximize it more. Of course, there is a little bit of a problem because if you bring up the volume, it will also bring up any other noise. So if there's wind or birds or cars in the background or an air conditioner, that sound will grow also. So you need to kind of watch out for that. The best thing is that when you're shooting your video, you get those, that line is always heading towards zero but not over zero. 
Now just very quickly on here we have a couple more buttons I want to show you. One button is the Phantom Power. This microphone needs to have power. If I turn this to no power, this is giving no power to the microphone. You can see it's not working. Even though I'm speaking into it now, it's not picking up anything. Nothing, zero, why? Because this needs power. A different kind of microphone, like your KTV microphone, may not need power. That would work without power. This microphone needs power. I switch on the power, and now it's working. That's called phantom power. Here is abbreviated as PH. Also, we have a gain area up here. Now, this is very common, that you have a little switch that says gain high and low. Now, you can see L and R, left and right. I've only plugged in one input, one microphone, so my one microphone is on the right side. If I turn the gain to low, that means that it's pushing the volume up less. And if I push it to, to high, whoops, I got it backwards. If I push it to low, it's less. If I push it to high, it's more. It's kind of boosting the sound. It's a, it's a boost to the signal. So if the microphone is very weak, if the sound is very low, you can boost it high. So watch this here. I'm in low now, low gain. So here, and I'm gonna begin talking. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, you see? I changed it to high gain. That boosted the signal. Now I'm way over, way over. I don't need that. Or I could turn down my volume here to get that down and bring it down. Boy, that's hard. Here, if I bring it all the way down and I just turn it up a couple notches, all of a sudden it's way too powerful, the signal, way too high, just jumping up and down. That's because the gain is turned high. If I turn the gain to low, now my volume is too low, so I'm gonna bring my volume up and you can see we slowly come up towards that zero mark we're looking for. There we go, test, one, two, three, four, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. There, that looks good. Okay, so uh, yeah, yeah, pretty cool, right? And that's portable, that runs on a battery. That does not need to be plugged in, so that's an awesome little device. Now, you may not be using this device. You may be using a mixer board, or you may be doing it in software on your computer screen, or you may be using a phone app to do that, but that's how you do it. You want to get below zero, not passing zero, and you need to make adjustments to make sure that happens. The most important thing is don't chop it off. Don't go too high. Low is better than high, but you need to get it a nice sweet spot. Which means a good luck recording your audio.